This lesson also is, goes out to all you guys. Uh, I haven't done this one in quite a while, and uh, I think it's very important to go in steps as I teach. Uh, the, the logic behind uh, the lessons is uh, to learn the technique and the scales. What you want to do is you want to learn just the basics really well. And to me, uh, it goes in steps. First, you learn half steps, what half steps are on the fingerboard, which is one fret to another. Then after half steps, you learn whole steps. And then after whole steps, you learn the next interval, which is a whole step plus a half step, which is a minor third. So here's a half step. Here's a whole step. Here's a minor third. And then a major third is two whole steps. So the basic building blocks of music are half steps and whole steps. Okay? So what I teach everybody, and I've done this for decades, is I teach them the half steps first, which is, we just did that. We did the chromatic scales. So that's the chromatic scales because we do all half steps. And we learn the half steps, we learn how to hear in half steps. The next step is whole steps, okay? And a lot of guys have heard of the whole tone scale and, you know, the term gets tossed around and, you know, there's people who are somewhat familiar with it, you know, it goes like this, right? Yeah, everybody else got this vague knowledge, but let me, let me show you how to play the whole tone scale. Here's how you do the whole tone scale. It's all whole steps on the next. So first of all, again, go to my website download whole tone scales right you got all these documents here you got the whole tone scales on the neck here right then you've got the first pattern here okay i want you to download those and print those out and have them sitting there okay the first thing is you're looking at this diagram here that's the whole tone scale on the neck complete all right you can see each note is a whole step apart from the next note. So a whole tone scale is actually considered to be a quote unquote symmetric scale because every note in the scale is equidistant from the next note. So each note is a whole step from the next note. There's no half steps in the whole tone scale. So the whole tone scale is a symmetric scale. So it's equidistant. That means it can be any one of the notes in the scale can be its root or tonic. So you have six notes in the whole tone scale because you've got all whole steps. So it goes E, a whole step up to the second fret would be F sharp, right? Another whole step, G sharp or A flat, right? Another whole step, A sharp or B flat. Another whole step to C, right? Another whole step to D. And then a whole step again to E again, right? So it's a very non, you know, gravity, key gravity oriented sound. It doesn't have, it doesn't pull to any one key. It's a very spacey, ethereal key relationship that it has, okay? E whole tone scale. This scale was used a lot uh, in the Romantic period of music, and it was popularized by Claude Debussy. Uh, Debussy, you loved the whole tone scale, uh, as did the Russian composer Alexander Skriavin. He liked the whole tone scale, but he more liked the uh, whole step, whole step, half step scale than the whole tone. Uh, Debussy really used uh, the whole tone scale a lot, and a lot of his chords were based on stacking whole tones uh, out of the scale, which gave it his real spacey sound that he had. So if you go to this diagram here, this neck diagram, what I want you guys to do is either print out more of these or Xerox this one off so you got, you know, multiple copies. Uh, you see the light goes from dark to bright again. This is, camera's got automatic white balance. You know, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but anyway. Um, so what you want to do is you look at, you study this diagram. Put it on the wall, you know, look at it. And really look at it. You know, look at these chord shapes you can see in there. You can take a pencil and outline a few chord shapes, you know, like if I took a pen 
and just traced out four notes at a time, you know, I could get I could get a lot of chord shapes going on here. I could get uh, I'm just gonna do a couple here. So what I mean to do is you trace them out like that, see? You trace out some chord shapes. Now what you see is very important is that when you when you get a chord, the shape repeats itself every two frets, every whole step. Very important you guys to grasp this is that every time you got a chord shape, it repeats itself every two frets, it repeats itself. D minor to an F augment with B flat major 7 plus 11 again A augmented That's on the sheet. I can. Okay, so 
want you guys to experiment with some of those shapes and start playing around with them. You know, every two frets, the chord repeats itself. Okay? So that's just step one, is you got to map out a whole bunch of shapes. Just visually grab shapes off the paper, write them out, you know, circle four notes, three notes, whatever you can do. And then practice those chords, you know. You... experiment and try these whole tone chords or augmented chords okay second thing is you want to practice the scale the whole tone scale all right here's how we're going to practice it we get the first diagram that shows you where the scale is right second second page here shows you the fingering and where the shift is okay so when you play the whole tone scale start here on the first fret Go up a whole step, another whole step. Now, if you go another whole step up to B, that puts four notes on one string. So you want to keep it at three notes for now, okay? So you go whole step, whole step, whole step. Now we're gonna to go to the second fret, B. And then a whole step, whole step. Again, a whole step here, F, G, A, B, C sharp, D sharp. Now you gotta you gotta shift up one extra fret so you go to F. So let's see if you can see that better. We're gonna go F G A B C sharp D sharp or E flat. F G A B C sharp D sharp F G A so it sounds like this. So what this teaches you to do is the one to hear the scale, to hear what it sounds like, you know, in the context of uh, actual scale, playing it, okay? You got the chords, and play the scale. All right, now the next thing is, uh, everybody who I show this scale to, and I did it myself originally, but when you play the scale, it's this big stretch. It's like that. It's like whole step, whole step. You don't want to pivot like that. We call that rocking the boat. Don't rock the boat. Don't rock the boat. Don't pivot like this because you can't stretch. The whole thing is designed to teach you how to stretch and get you to stretch more. So don't, don't do that. Don't rock the boat. Stretch it like this. So you keep it smooth. And the next thing is, a lot of guys will play the scale, and they got their third finger way up here like that. The walrus flappers. You don't want to have walrus flappers when you're playing guitar or bass. You want to keep, keep them all in tight like this. Don't let it go over the top. It's all about technique. And then you shift here, two frets. You guys see it okay? So we got... tone scale so you try to try for the smooth movement like that try for that smoothness force yourself to go smooth see smooth and don't pick your fingers really far off the strings okay don't do that just keep them in tight Okay, so are you with me on that? Whole tone scale is one, two, and four. Stretch, keep your thumb back here, tilt it up, got it up by your ear, right? And then don't rock the boat. Don't lift them very far away from the string. Keep them all in tight. Go for the smooth factor here. Just smooth, smooth, smooth. Try for that smooth way to play. So whole tone scale. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, whole tone scales are used against these augmented chords or dominant chords with a sharp five or a flat five. Um, if you have a, a very common progression is a, uh, a two, five, one progression where you have D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. You can play it over D minor seven, you know, over D minor, you play a D minor scale. Over that G seven, play a G mixolydian or a C major. To a C major seven. So again, D minor seven, you play a D Dory. To a G seven, G mixolydian. To a C major seven. Now the whole tone scale comes in where instead of playing a G seven, if you want to tweak it a little bit and play a G seven sharp five. So it sounds like this: D minor seven, G seven sharp five, C major seven or C major nine plus eleven. So you got D minor seven, D Dorian mode. G7 plus 5, G whole tone scale, huh? To a C major scale. Again, D minor 7, G7 plus 5, C major 7. So that's one quick way to illustrate that. Um, a lot of uh, jazz guitarists like the whole tone scale because you could use it against altered chords. Um, if you've got a song like Scatterbrain, Jeff Beck, where it starts out B minor seven. Okay, B flat minor seven goes to a B flat seven, flat five. Then it goes to a D over C. And to an E over D, and to a G major 9, then we got this descending diminished chord pattern, G over F, E over D, D flat over B, B flat over G flat, or B flat over A flat, and then back to B flat minor 7. So for B flat minor 7, we could play anything, right? A B flat minor pentatonic. Jeff Beck does. But then it goes to a B7 flat 5. Now here's where you use a whole tone scale. It sounds like a fist, doesn't it? Then it goes to a D over C. Well, you could play a D major pentatonic over that. That's a cool sound. E over D, go to an E major pentatonic, and then G major 9, and go to a G major scale or a G major pentatonic, and then we got this, So you got a B7 flat 5, you can use whole tone scale over that. Uh, B7 sharp 5, same thing, right? So that's used a lot over chords with a sharp 5 or a flat 5, okay? Major 3rd, sharp 5, flat 5, because the whole tone scale has a major 3rd in it, not a minor 3rd, okay? Uh, so basically, over augmented chords, sharp 5, flat 5, um, that's used a lot in jazz music and uh, romantic era classical music used a lot of whole tone 
scales, especially Claude Debussy. If you guys want to hear some real spacey music, you know, go look up Claude Debussy. You can uh, get them on iTunes, and you can also uh, go to Rhapsody. I think it's a free 14-day trial of Rhapsody. You can go free for 14 days where you can listen to anything you want. And then I think you pay after that. I, I subscribe to Rhapsody. I think it's nine ninety five a month, and you can listen to pretty much anything. They have a lot of really, really amazing stuff on there. Uh, other thing is uh, for classical guys who like to listen to classical music, uh, the best place is Naxos, N-A-X-O-S. That has the best classical libraries. They're in out of Japan. And um, I uh, fortunately don't have to pay uh, my annual $20 a year, which is cheap, because uh, they have it at the university where I teach at. Is, uh, Naxos is on their subscription plan for their uh, music department, so I can log in and listen to anything I want, classical. Every, they got everything. Everything that's like, ever been recorded is on Naxos for classical music. And now they have Naxos Jazz, which is uh, expanding and expanding and expanding. It's a Japanese company, so they're really, really aggressive about expanding. And Rhapsody is real good. iTunes, is, of course, is the industry standard. And there's a few new ones, you know, I keep, students keep hitting me to all these new ones where they can get MP3 files and stuff. You guys got to research it on your own. I just know the basic uh, dummy commercial sites, you know. But anyway, uh, the whole tone scale uh, is used over, you know, chords with a sharp five or chords with a flat five, augmented chords. And also, it's used in situations where you want to step out of the norm and you want to sound tweakish or weirdish momentarily, you know. Uh, I got in trouble back in the 70s because I was always playing whole tone scales and, uh, you know, being in bar bands, top 40 bands, whatever. You know, you start. I started playing whole tone scales for my solos over Ted Nugent songs, which, you know, the, the singers in the bands, they hate, they couldn't handle it. They absolutely hate it. Bass players would, like, look up and go, wow, what was that? That sounded wild, you know. Anybody who's a musician or a guitar player in the audience would look up and go, that sounded cool. What the hell was that, you know? But the singers, they're not used to that, so they're just like, what, what is this jazz? You're always playing jazz over rock songs, man. This ain't going to work out, you know? So anyway, I got kicked out of that band for playing whole tone scales over Ted Nugent. <laughs> I'm sure if Ted, if I was in Ted Nugent's band, I would also play whole tone scales. Wouldn't you guys? I mean, if, if Ted Nugent hired you guys to play in his band, absolutely, you'd have to just solo only whole tone scales, right? And teach it to him, too, right? Anyway. First whole tone scale, it's going up the string like this. Don't rock the boat, right? Don't rock the boat. Don't pull your fingers way far away. Keep them tight. Okay, the second one. Going to the next page here. Whole tone across. <clears throat> now, what I've done is I've made these, sh these geometric shapes on top of here. So you've got two right angle trapezoids and one left angle trapezoid. So that's how, you, how I learned it was to memorize it by geometric shape. Two trapezoids pointing one way and, two trapezo and one trapezoid pointing the other way. <clears throat> so you, what you've got is uh, uh, starting on, let's say, G. Or here it starts on A here in the fifth fret. So we go A. One, two, four, fingering, right? So you can see that, okay? One, two, four. One, three. One, two, four. One, three. So those two shapes, you got one, two, four, one, three. And again, one, two, four, one, three. Now it's a reverse, it's a mirror image. It's one, three, one, two, four. Does that make, make sense to you guys? Does that make any sense? Okay. One, two, four, one, three. One, two, four, one, three. One, three, one, two, four. So you got one, two, four, one, three. One, two, four, one, three. One, three, one, two, four. All right? And reverse. So that's the whole tone scale going across. Now there's another variation where you can go one, three, one, two, four, and then do it again. 
But then it shoots you into this oddball territory. You gotta go two, four, one, three, four. Not my favorite, but it's there. Then two, four, one, three, four. Okay, now these fingerings, of course, are not set in stone. They're suggested fingerings. You guys, you know, if you can't stretch one, two, four, try one, three, four. You know, whatever you can work with your size hands you've got, try it, you know, but tr try the stretch. You want to use these to, to help you stretch out your hand more and to, you know, acclimate your ears to hearing the way the whole tone scale sounds because it's a very uh, sort of spacey, abstract sound of the whole tone scale. It doesn't have a key. So, you know, you want to get used to hearing what this sounds like. It may expand your creativity and later on, you know, where you want to add some spacey sound to something, you want to use a whole tone scale. Okay, so we got one, two, four, one, three, twice, again, and then one, three, one, two, four. So... Okay, now the next one, which is uh, on page whatever this is, we got two in a row here that I, I want to share with you guys. This is going uh, at a reverse angle here. This is one three one three one three one three. Okay, that's going back this way. <laughs> That's one way to do it. But I realize when you get to here, some guitars you 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 butt up against the headstock, so you want to not use one and three here maybe, or two and four here maybe. Uh, the next one is two and four, and this is a the two and four is what I prefer to practice this with because <clears throat> it's the same scale pattern going at a reverse angle, right? But we're going to strengthen our pinky up and get our coordination up by doing two and four. Uh, two and four like this. Two and four. Two and four. Two and four. Two and four. Now this is what I was talking about. Was, uh, when you get up to here, if you go two and four, your index finger uh, butts up against the headstock on most guitars. So either you can live with that or just change to one and three in the very last string here. If you go. That's how I basically, you know, practice it. All right, two and four all the way. <clears throat> okay, now, next thing is uh, these chords. I've outlined a few of them here on this sheet here. And you can see those shapes. Those shapes will be easy to finger. You can figure out your own fingerings for those. They're just four dots, three dots and four dots on the neck in the whole tone scale. So what we've got here is the first one here. <clears throat> it's at the top and it repeats every two frets like this. Okay. And the next one is this one here. And it repeats every two frets like this. Okay, and the next one is this one here. Your basic uh, popular shape for the augmented chord that'll be a G augmented. G augmented be like this. See that? Okay. All right, and it goes up every two frets. Next one is a kind of a mirror image of that. We got this shape here. Now you've heard that in movies. All right, and the next one is a this is an angle shape. You know, it's hard, easier to do up here. Here, see. All right, whole tone scale. Right, so you got four ways to practice it, okay? Linear, 
going up the neck like this. Don't rock the boat. Uh, going whole tone across like this. And then whole tone uh, two and four, going, or one and three, go back this way. And whole tone two and four. Now, if you want to add the fifth way to practice, actually, you could add six ways to practice it. You could actually do a cross this way, one, two, and four. Or one, three, one, two, four. But it throws you into that oddball, so, you know, your call. Of course, learn it all, right? That's what I always say now, but I don't have that in the diagram here. You have to fit, map it out a little bit yourself. And then the sixth way of practicing would be also just doing on one string like this. You want to go. So that teaches you to, to move up, right? Whoop. That's another way to practice it. Uh, you can also jump up every two frets like this. That's a popular way with jazz guitars. Like. Actually, Jan Garberg, the saxophone player, does it like that. He goes. And he makes a little squeak sound every time he hits the note. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Okay, then also uh, <clears throat> there's this little pattern here, which is, uh, I think it's the, <clears throat> the one that's used most by guitarist John Abercrombie. And uh, well, I watched him play several times uh, at the Lighthouse in Hermosa Beach back in the 70s. And he, uh, he's one of my favorite, favorite sort of fusion -y jazz guitarists in the old days. Uh, he played the whole tone scale. If you notice on the diagram, you can play a whole tone scale like this. <laughs> It's a real easy fingering, one, three, one, three. So he would do this really quick hammer on. That's the John Abercrombie lick, okay? And back down. Okay, so those are whole tone scale. Now, next thing, of course, is the timing of it, right? Well, you guys, what do you need? Aha, your buddy, the metronome. This is your lifetime friend now, folks. We're gonna set it at our favorite starting time, 60. Can you hear that? You hear that? Not if you hear it. Okay, good. All right. <clears throat> uh, whole tone scale going up the string, up up the linear. Okay, up the linear. Yeah, I, I speak English good, huh? Okay. One, two, and four. We're gonna do. We well, can start with quarter notes. I recommend starting with quarter notes at sixty if you guys don't know this, and if you're gonna make mistakes. Go slow like this, so you memorize it better. That shift there is going to trip you up. See, I got off time there because I was talking. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. When you get the shift here from the third string to the second string, from the G string to the B string, you got to go one, two, four here, and then shift two frets to there. That's the key. It's not this. It's this. Then it goes back to one one fresh shift. So quarter notes. this slow to start out my friends you got to do it this way for at least a week okay 
You know, because I know you guys don't know this that well. So you just got to give yourself the time to go slow and learn stuff slow. More reps equals greater speed. Do more reps over a longer period of time. You'll get fast at it, all right? So <clears throat> whole tone scale going up. That was uh, quarter notes. Let's do eighth notes, two notes per beat. Sloppy, huh? After two notes for beat, three. Yeah, fancy that. Okay, <clears throat> three notes for beat would be though with triplet, right? It's not. No, 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 no. It's triple, uh, triple, uh, triple. Uh. Remember, if you don't always, if you don't know the timing, always try it on just one string, so you get the beat. Okay. Now another key to feeling timing is uh, I had a student the other day, a little while ago, we were trying to do a reggae song, and he he was just not getting the strum at all, you know, not getting the feel for it, just totally horrible at playing reggae, just the wrong the wrong feel. I mean, it was like you know. And this guy was going. And he was just sitting there in the chair. And I looked at him and I go, a middle-aged white guy trying to play reggae without even trying to tap his foot. This ain't going to happen. <laughs> you got to move your body. Move your torso. Tap your foot. Feel the beat, right? This is why we play music anyway, because humans feel the music. They feel the beat. If you sit there like an accountant looking at an Excel spreadsheet and try to get a beat, <clears throat> you're going to be like Steve Martin in The Jerk, you know, where you can't even move his feet in time at all. So you got to feel the beat. So a reggae feel, you got to move your torso. Tap your foot. I'm saying this now. I have to repeat it a thousand more times for all you guys because no one remembers. And they go back to sitting in a chair all, all stiff. They, they don't tap their foot. They just sit there, you know, like a white middle-aged guy accountant, you know, staring at a, a spreadsheet. No. Sorry, accountants. I know you guys are valuable. I'm just, I'm just using you as an illustration. So it's a compliment. We're laughing with you, not at you. So they say. Anyway, uh, whole tone scale, if you want to do triplets, triple, uh, tri you got to turn on the metronome again. And feel triple. And uh, move your torso with the beat so you feel the triplet better. You know, stomp your foot. Move your head up and down. You know. Close your eyes and feel that triple, uh, triple, uh, triple. If you guys do what I'm telling you, it works great. I've been doing this, teaching this <clears throat> over three decades, you know, so, and I've tried everything. So, you know, I'm telling you what's going to work. If you, if you move, you know, with the beat, you'll feel it a lot quicker than the guy who doesn't move at all and doesn't even tap his foot. Really, seriously. You know, that's the key is to move your body, move your torso, move your head up and down, feel it, ingrain yourself with the beat. You know, I've helped guys that have never played music in their life and they start picking up the guitar at age 55 or whatever, 60. You get them to move their torso and their head to the beat, then they start feeling the beat better, you know? It's, it's, it's works. It's like magic, okay? All right. <clears throat> so we're going to tap our foot. We're going to feel trips. Ready? One, two, three, four. Triple, uh, triple, uh, triple. So that's three notes for beat. Now 
Now, the whole tone scale in triplets should be easy because it's three notes per string, right? All you three NPS freaks. Here we go. Triple, a triple, a one and a two and a three. I like Lawrence Welk. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, three, four. Um, I double the top note and the bottom note because it makes for an even picking pattern. You can choose to do that or not. You can go like this. Or like this. I prefer the latter because uh, it, it makes for an even picking pattern. That's the only reason, okay? So, again, triplets. Triple, uh, triple, uh. As you can you know a couple minutes three five ten minutes however long you guys want to practice it the longer you practice it you know the better you'll get it and the more days in a row you practice it, the better you'll get at it right we know that equation already don't we all right <clears throat> next one after triplets is what four notes for beat <clears throat> 16th notes right here we go three four Feel it? Move your head. Tap your foot. Tap your foot. Tap your foot. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, play. seconds you know you guys could do that all right after four notes for beat five right five notes for beat <clears throat> ready how do you feel that guacamole queen guacamole queen guacamole queen right avocado king avocado king avocado king right one two three four five one two three four five five evenly spaced notes right evenly spaced it's not no, wrong, 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 wrong. Five evenly spaced notes. All played evenly spaced, like this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to do that with a whole tone scale. Ready? One, two, ready? Three, four. <laughs> metronome down to 40 or 50 if you have to <clears throat> and try it again you know because you got to get these down timing is really important in music and you know all the guys that want to play fast always neglect all the different timings you know three oh three against one four against one five against one six and seven against one and then there's even more complicated timings than that that are you know a piece of cake for a lot of jazz musicians you know three against two four against two five against two six against two seven against two and then you got three against three, four against three, five against three. 
six against three, seven against three. If you go to my website and you download the page uh, Matrix of Ratios, that has them all laid out there, all the timing that you want to feel for all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, we're going to go over that a lot later on. But uh, for now, I want you guys to feel triplets, you know, 16th notes, and then five tuplets, right? Quintuplets, whatever you want to call them. British guys, what do they call chord notes? 16th notes are semi demi quavers, and 32nd notes are semi hemi demi quavers. You guys all drive on the left. You know, I tell you guys that I got in trouble for trying to be an English guy once. Yeah, I went and saw Holdsworth, and I was so inspired, I tried to be a British guy too. So, you know, I just did what the British guys do. I drank a bunch of gin and drove on the left side of the road. The freaking cops pulled me over, man. They didn't dig it. Can you believe that? English guys. You know, you English guys are watching this stuff. And I get the most argument of all from all the British guys. They love to just argue and just, you know, tit-tat with me on it. But anyway, we love you all. So uh, they just have a weird sense of language, don't you think? Is it English that they're speaking? Or what is that? British. British. They don't say the T. They go British. Okay. Why am I talking about that? All right. Uh, we were doing... Uh, Five against one, right? Let's do six. Double, triple, triple, a triple, right? There you go. Two, three, four. seconds right uh, six against six against one what's after six seven right can we do seven at 60 let's try seven on one string one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three. and two strings on one second dummy right Let's try it. One, two, three, four. A little too fast, huh? So, go down to 50. A little slower. even that's there's eight ready two three four Thank mm -hmm. you. 
through nine at another time. But anyway, one through eight is good against 60. I drop down to 50, those 50 beats per minute. Uh, and then you increase your speed gradually. You know, as the days go by, you just keep going faster and faster. But you got to do it clean. And to do more reps, you'll get more speed. You, if you do less, if you try to play fast without doing more reps, you'll always glitch. You know, I have got a lot of young guys who take lessons that are 15, 16 years old, and they're always going to play as fast as they can. But they glitch constantly, and they don't sound smooth. And I've told this one guy, you know, 500 times, dude, slow down and try to play it smooth and clean. And he just tries to go fast, and he glitches, goes fast, and he glitches, goes fast. And then after about 10 minutes of frustration, he stops and takes a deep breath, and he tries to go slow. And he'll do it like one time. Then he'll try to go fast again. You know, that's, that's called being 16, right? And uh, that's... Some guys learn right away that in order to play fast, you got to play slow, more accurately, more reps. Other guys, it takes them a long time to figure it out because they always are pushing to go fast, right? But after they glitch so many thousands of times in a row and they don't sound clean, they get frustrated enough to where then they got to stop and go back to the drawing board again. That's always the way it works out. So you can bypass that by listening to my words and just say, go slow, you know, do more reps, slower speed. More days in a row will get you the speed, not the, not trying to play real fast right now. Play, playing fast comes with just, you know, process of time over playing a lot of reps over many, many, many weeks, you know. You'll get faster at it. And then when you get real coordinated, then you can twist up their adrenaline flow, you know, and just start to really muscle playing faster. And then you can get some speed. But you'll, you'll end up being sloppy at it at first, but then, then the muscles will take control and you'll get more accurate. Anyway, so that's the whole tone scale. Uh, timing wise okay and i'm i only use the linear one here i haven't done the ones going across i mean we could do all those with all these patterns but the next thing i want to show you is uh hold on scale uh just some basic sequences okay uh the first one uh we did a scale just straight scale okay the next thing is just a basic two note sequence okay and a two note sequence is where you start with sequences there's a million sequences but you start with a two note a one note sequence is just a scale. One note, one note, one note. A two note sequence, you play two notes, and then you play another two notes, and another two notes. So you go, and then, and then, and then, and then. So that sounds like this. So again, one, two. Apply the timing to that, all right? So you got. Two notes for eight, right? for beat with a two note pattern whoa you there's the pattern you want to go da, 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 triple uh, tri really hard huh you gotta go triple uh, Triple la, 
tough triplets a two note pattern with triplets you gotta break that down so you want to go triple la triple la triple la Four note pattern, you know, like this. And then a five note pattern, right? Six note pattern, seven note pattern. Okay, now the next pattern is up. Instead of doing the first two notes, we're gonna do first note and the third note. So, and then the second note and the fourth note. So what we got is this. So we got Two eighth notes, you know.
It's a little difficult. You just gotta work it, you know. That's four notes for beat, right? Five notes for beat. So it's Seven. Now I don't want to try seven because I don't want you guys to laugh at me. But uh, seven is again. Might be too fast. The sixty, so we go down to fifty. <clears throat> so we got. So I'm nodding my head. Feel the beat. So that's a two note sequence going the first note and 
a third note of the scale, second note and fourth note, third note and fifth note, fourth note and sixth note. <clears throat> One other thing is the whole tone scale is a six note scale, it's not a seven note scale. And uh, they uh, would call that a hexachord or a hexascale. Hexachord is the original term for a six note scale, a hexachord. Uh, Guido of Arizona used to compose lots of music using hexachords, which are six note scales. <clears throat> so we got the intervals of uh, two notes, a two note sequence, right? Now, the next note we can use in a two note sequence would be we'd skip the second note, we'd skip the third note, we go to the fourth note. So one and four, two and five. Three and six. So it sounds like this. Okay, so you can do all the sequences with those notes. Uh, after that, you might probably want to go into a three note sequence. Three note sequences, you know, you can use the first three notes like this. And then the next three notes. The next three notes. The next three notes. Four note sequence. Five note sequence. So there's a lot of sequences you can use with these scales if you want to really get good at them. Uh, today I'm just covering just the whole tone scale and a couple of basic ideas using the timing with it. You know, a one note per beat, two notes per beat, three notes per beat, four notes per beat, five, six, and seven notes per beat. Using a two note sequence and a three note sequence. A three note sequence again would be... And then you divide that up into, two, you know, eighth notes, triplets, sixteenths, five tuplets, sex, sex tuplets, septuplets, you know. You really got to work the timing with all the scales that you play. But the whole tone scale is a very good scale to know because it's all whole steps. And it has an atonal character because there's no gravity pulling it towards any one key or another. There's six notes in a whole tone scale, so therefore in a chromatic scale... There exists two whole tone scales, right? You got a scale starting on E. And then the second scale starts on F. If you go to the next note, F sharp, that's the same scale as the E scale, isn't it? Right here's E. Here's F sharp. So every other note is in the same key, right? So E is one key, F sharp is the same key, G sharp is the same key. A sharp or B flat is the same key, C is the same key, D is the same key, E, right? The next key that's not part of those notes would be the other notes, F, G, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, or E flat. So there's two whole tone scales in a chromatic scale. In a chromatic scale, there's one chromatic scale that's all 12 notes. So you could say there's one key for chromatic scales or there's 12 chromatic scales. Take your pick. There could be 12 Chromatic scales or one chromatic scales. Likewise, there could be uh, two whole tone scales or 12 whole tone scales. You can start from any note in the chromatic scale and play a whole tone scale. But it's a redundancy because the notes repeat themselves. In other words, a G whole tone scale would be G, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E flat, if you will, F, G. So again, G, A, B. C sharp, D sharp, F, G. And the A whole tone scale would be A, B, C sharp, D sharp, F, G, A. Same notes, just starts the next two frets higher. So there's really only six notes in that scale. You can start from any note on the scale and it'll be the key that you start on. Or it would be any one of the six notes would be the key. So the notes in between would be the other key. So there's only really two whole tone scales. And... Uh, I, got, I want you guys to, to include this in your daily practice, a whole tone scale. 
And if you want to ingrain the sound of them, you got to sing the sound of the whole tone scale in your head, like, you know. <laughs> inside your ear training, okay? That's what you want to work on, is always developing the sound of what you're doing inside your head so you can go to it anytime you need to. All right, so this is just a basic overview of the whole tone scale. Uh, there's a lot more to it that jazz guys know that I haven't covered in this video. Believe me, there's a lot more guys using the whole tone scale in jazz than anything else. And, of course, you know, go and check out Claude Debussy, D-E-B-U-S-S-Y. Listen to his music. He's got a lot of whole tone uh, scales and a lot of whole tone chords in his 19th century romantic, you know, post-classical period, which is really, Debussy's just some unbelievably great music. I mean, if you really like uh, that style, I love Debussy, and his whole tone, work of whole tone scales is unbelievable. Uh, another place whole tone scales was used a lot was, believe it or not, guitarist Django Reinhardt loved playing licks in the whole tone scale. He loved whole tone rips up and down the neck because they were sort of dissonant and atonal and symmetrical, okay? So then that's the subject of symmetrical scales. So we got the chromatic scale covered, and we got the whole tone scale covered. Next, we're going to go to the next interval, which is a whole step plus a half step, which would be what? A minor third. And that minor third gives us what we call the diminished scale, and that's like this. Okay, so stay tuned for the next video on the diminished scale. Pepper Brown, over and out for now. Practice.